everyone, and a very warm welcome back to campus. My name is Danica, and I manage our individual giving programs for the center. I gotta say, it is absolutely fantastic to be here this evening with you. We've got an exciting program scheduled, so I think it's best that we get going. Let's go this way. I'm Kay Burnham, the Center's Vice President of Guest Services. Welcome to Sagerstrom Hall, all 8,500 square feet and um, just a little over 3,000 seats of it. Today I'm here with the Center's Executive Vice President, Judy Moore, and the President of the Center, Casey Ritz. Hello. This is all where it started in 1986. So um, why don't we start with some of your memories? What are your favorite memories of this place? Opening night, 1986. <laughs> So that means I've been here forever, and I want to stay here forever, and I just want it to open. I want to open again. What was the performance? Oh, we sang the Star Spangled Banner, and it was, I think, the Pacific Symphony, and it was a glorious performance. I sort of heard it. Um, <laughs> but then we had the biggest party ever in Orange County, and of course, pride, took great pride in having it an enormous party, mm -hmm. and so many people were invited, all the volunteers who had made it possible to build this beautiful hall. I know you haven't been here with us long, Casey, but what are some, do you have any favorite memories so far? No, unfortunately, I was only here three months before uh, we had the, we had the shutdown, but I was able to come see some wonderful performances here in this hall. My very first event in this hall was our annual fundraising tradition, Candlelight, which was, which was quite beautiful, featuring, featuring Steve Martin, and got to meet Steve Martin that night. So that was a, a thrill as someone who'd watched him on Saturday Night Live for years and years and years. <laughs> and then we moved right into another wonderful center tradition, Nutcracker, with uh, our collaboration with American Ballet Theater. And uh, how many years have we been doing Nutcracker? I think it's six now. Six now with Alexei Romanski's choreography, yes, which was- and our own children from our ABT Gillespie School. That's absolutely and right. And from that school, we're gonna have great new dancers that will just perform around the world. And I'll come back and talk about Orange County. And that was a thrill. I got to watch those 35 kids rehearse right over there for their big moments in the Nutcracker. Lots of excitement and passion. And then that dovetailed into another Alexei Romanski world premiere of Love and Rage. So it was thrilling to come and see a long-standing center tradition that dovetailed into a, a world premiere full story ballet that was a huge lift and sadly would have uh, had its premiere in New York at Lincoln Center in June, yet here we sit, and one day we'll go to New York and see that. But you might think that we only do ABT and Alexei Rotmonsky's work, but that's not true. Right. Okay, we've had every major company in the world I on know. this stage, and they've all been glorious. What is the timeline for reopening, and what are we doing to make sure that our patrons are safe when, we, when they come back to our hall? We cannot wait to get back. We have been working diligently every single day to find a way to get back. Uh, Judy will talk about the, the programming, but we've been working with the Performing Arts Center uh, Consortium, which is a group of performing arts centers around the country that we are a member of, along with LA Music Center, the Kennedy Center, Lincoln Center, on creating all the appropriate protocols. We have uh, made significant purchases of PPE, we are installing touchless faucets, touchless soap dispensers in Segerstrom Hall and around the campus. We have touchless 
payment systems, which I know you're very proud yes, of. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we are looking at our HVAC systems with an industrial hygienist uh, company named TRC that uh, is based in Irvine and works at South Coast Plaza. And they, uh, I'm happy to announce that our HVAC air circulation systems meet and exceed all the recommendations from the California Department of Public Health and the CDC. Um, we are working also with this industrial hygienist to work on all of our cleaning protocols, routine enhanced cleaning protocols. We, we go throughout the center and identify all the high touch surfaces and make sure they're being properly cleaned and paid attention to. And this company, TRC, actually comes in afterwards and does quality control and tests to make sure that that cleaning is happening. So on the hygiene front, the cleanliness front, we are ready as soon as the good state of California allows us to reopen, we will. And we've done all the modeling, um, including the seating charts and the traffic flow, which we thank Kay for because she is a master at that. It's her new, her new um, one of her latest skills um, that she probably will become world famous for, but why don't you describe what you do? Well, uh, we are taking a lot of, making a lot of effort in adjusting our seating maps, uh, looking at new ways of seating people on our plaza and in some of our halls to help space them out so that we can do this safely. We're also right on the verge of announcing a digital ticket platform so that all of our tickets can be done digitally, safely, with no contact whatsoever when you come through the venue door. Brilliant. And then I suppose Casey wants me to say that I, um, I have something to report about programming. And I would tell you that I honestly work at it every day. And I have moved every show that we had at least three times. And I continue to find the space for the Broadway shows that are ready to go out. And that is tricky because no one's quite sure when the Broadway shows will go out on tour. I work with our arts partners. I never forget them. That would be the Pacific Chorale, Pacific Symphony, and the Philharmonic Society. And they all have potential dates when we are open. We know that the symphony is working on um, streaming from the stage. We know that we too are working to stream concerts. We have coming up Laura Bonatti, Patti Lapone, and Vanessa Williams. We try to take advantage of technology to keep people in touch with our love, which is the theater. Uh, but it's, it's not the same as being inside but it's the best we can do right now. And we miss you, mm -hmm. and we want you all back here with us. But so. what we do know is we have heard from our donors, our ticket buyers, our, our audience members, our artists, our students, that everyone wants to come back. And as soon as we're allowed to do so, I believe we will have earned their trust that they will be safe, and we will take care of everybody, including the staff, and they will, they will happily come back, and I welcome that day. For us, this is exciting to be here because it's really the first time we've been, we've been, we've been together. Stage. We've been together and not only that, but we're on the <coughs> stage and we're looking around and we're thinking, oh gosh, this is where we belong. I said before we started filming, they're gonna be able to see the joy on our, on our faces because it's true, it's real. This is, this is where we love to be. I, I'm, I'm tired of just looking at the view outside my bedroom window. It's nice to, to be in, a, in an actual theater. So then I, I guess I'd wanna know, what is it that you are looking most forward to having back on our stages? Is there a particular thing that you're working on or just a, a general uh, type of show that you're looking the most forward to putting back on this stage? Well, I want everything back on stage, but for the short term, Casey and I are both working on a project with American Ballet Theater. It would be like um, a bubble for the dancers and they would work together, rehearse here, um, and then they would stay at the same hotel in the same area. They would eat together, um, come back, do the same thing over and over and over till they've learned the role. Um, and then there would be um, a very small showcase on stage 
um, including the choreographer, which we would, we would film, possibly stream. Um, and that is almost a reality. We haven't quite worked out the details yet. Um, and Casey has to get busy on that. Well, we've, one, of the, one of the benefits from being one of the last types of industries to come back last is we get to see how everybody else does it, either does it well or does it poorly. And this is kind of the, the NBA model, right? Yes. Of, of keeping the players, the, the dancers together, and it'll be safe and it'll be beautiful. And to create a new work during a pandemic will be a, a huge achievement. Right. It's, it's what I live for, which is premieres of new work. Um, which is what the center has become known for, is premieres of new dance work, not always with ABT, but many, many other companies that come through. Um, and we want to continue that as soon as we can. Well, we have another question here from May. Uh, and she wants, she says that, you know, she loves coming to the center with her family and creating such special memories, which, man, I love hearing that. That's, that's what I live for, is those special memories people create. But it saddens her that the arts have been hit so hard during this pandemic. And she really wants to know what she and others can do to help support the center through this. Well, that's a very, very sweet and Isn't kind it? notion. I'm very appreciative of that. Um, well, they can continue to, to subscribe. We still have our Broadway series uh, scheduled. Uh, the dates might shift a little bit, but um, we've got Bands Visit, Frozen, Ain't Too Proud, To Kill a Mockingbird, Pretty Woman. Being I, said I twice. have moved Frozen so many times on the schedule <laughs> that I, I think it needs to be repeated over and over because I've moved it at least six times. And now, crossing my fingers, they will be ready to come. We've offered them time in advance so that if they are just coming back, they can rehearse here. Um, we can't wait, can't wait for the doors <laughs> to open and see all the ushers and see this. Oh, oh it's, it'll, be, it'll be a celebration over and over and over. And if some of those ticket buyers would like to donate their ticket back to a canceled show, they can do so. Not everybody always remembers that the Segerstrom Center for the Arts is a nonprofit organization, and we rely on 25% of our budget to be covered by contributed revenue. So if they're so kind as to donate their ticket back, that's wonderful. If they would like to make a contribution, that is certainly wonderful. Uh, we have lots of content online from previous shows, from some of the streaming you were talking about. We have lots of classes from the ABT Gillespie School and Studio D, formerly known as the School of Music and Dance for Children with Disabilities. So go to our website and experience Center at Home and, and participate. There's plus still our, ways to... Plus our education programs, yes. which are very prolific and working all the time to increase their content, which is really terrific for the school system because um, that's one of the good things that has happened with this situation with COVID. Um, there has been really um, increased knowledge and use of, of videos and that's good for teaching in the actual school. So um, if you have kids, if you have adults who wanna learn just go to our website and see when we'll have classes and please join us. We also have merchandise available online. There you um, go. Many patrons are used to coming to the Nutcracker in December or some of our other uh, holiday events like Dia de los Muertos. And we usually have merchandise for them to buy. Well, this year, because of the pandemic, with those events not taking place, we have moved our mar merchandise sales online. So that is yet another way that people can support us. That is an excellent thing and a great reminder. Yes. And you can recreate the Nutcracker at home. Absolutely. <laughs> and you mentioned, Casey, people donating their tickets. And that is probably one of the biggest questions we've got. In fact, uh, Ricardo had asked it about specifically about his Les Mis tickets, which mm -hmm. we know was postponed and then eventually canceled. Mm -hmm. And the answer, although the question was about Les Mis, applies to any of our canceled performances, which, as you mentioned, people have options. We have a wonderful, uh, easy to fill out form on our website that if they have tickets to a canceled show, they can go there and let us know exactly what they want to do, which includes applying the money from those tickets to a credit on their account for a future purchase. 
they can, of course, get a full refund. Mm -hmm. They can also donate the full face value or a portion of the face value. They have, we give them that much flexibility in what they want to do with their money. because We want to make it easy for them. We do. We recognize it's their money. We've mm -hmm. been holding on to it for a purpose. Now they get to decide what to do with it. And we do hope they, they continue to support us mm -hmm. with the donations and the credits. But we understand that people are hard hit. And if they need their money back, we're here to give it to them. Certainly. Certainly. Oh, this is a good one. This is less about the center and more about us. Oh, good. So um, Valerie wants to know what we've been doing to stay busy during quarantine. And uh, so, you know, life's pretty, pretty hectic before this. And uh, Judy and I were having a conversation earlier about the amount of time we have now that we didn't have before. So I got around to cleaning out my house and my kitchen. And I guess I have a question. Am I the only one who's alphabetized their spices during quarantine? <laughs> well, I, I, yes. I certainly have not done that. Yes, you are the only one. Yes. Okay, well, what, I think you, it's safe what to have say. you been doing? Well, I've used the time to uh, renew acquaintances, um, friendships. I now have time to talk to my daughters and talk to my grandchildren. And it's not like, oh, I have to go now, I have to be at work you know, we have a show, your mom has to go, and same is true with friends. Uh, and now that, you know, restaurants have opened, I've taken advantage of that opportunity to invite people that I've known forever here at the center to come and join me. And we talk about how life is going to be when the doors open and what are they doing? Because I love people and I like to share. It's lovely. I have 21-month-old twins, Miles and Severine, and when this all started, they weren't saying a word. They were still crawling, and I've, got, I've been home for so much of the time, front and center, and spend every morning with them and uh, give them their first bottle of the day, bathe them and put them to bed at night. Uh, they now walk. They weren't walking before. Uh, they, they can count to 20. They do their ABCs. Uh, Miles sings Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Chicka Chicka Boom Boom to me and Severine sings Pete the Cat to me. Oh my God, he's sitting so right here. They should come, right but I would, have, I would have missed all these amazing moments, either being at work you or being at the show. And uh, I, I wish this was all open so they could come and do this here. I don't mean on the stage, but just, you know, to entertain you. Um, but being able to spend a significant time with my children when I wouldn't have been able to otherwise is a pretty significant blessing. So is, I will remember that as a positive of, of the pandemic. And we're always trying to see what's, uh, what to be happy about and what to be optimistic about during this, this it's time. It's a great reminder to always look for that little silver lining to keep yep. your spirits high. Yep. Well, we have a question specifically for you, Casey, okay. from Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, being from New York, you let in New York, you led an organization that produced new musicals. Is this something you want to bring to the center? And what was that experience like? No, absolutely, and it was certainly something we were uh, talking about with the board when I when I uh, came on for the position. I've mostly come from mostly come from theater companies that mostly uh, produce new work, and I find that extremely exciting uh, to be able to to create something new, to put it out into the, into the world, work with designers, work with playwrights, uh, to help them craft their stories and, and talk about the themes and, and issues that they want to talk about is very, very satisfying. And we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, just to be able to do the world premiere of Love and Rage, something that really puts the Segerstrom Center on the map around California, around the country, and, and ideally internationally. It's, it's more of a, a high-risk producing model that requires a lot more uh, resources, but uh, I think it's worth it, and I think it's exciting to work with artists in the, that kind of capacity. So I would love to, to do more new work, new, more world premieres, wouldn't you, Judy? We can do that, and that's sort of what we're talking about. Um, maybe small scope in the Samueli Theater, because I've forgotten to mention that. It's not that we don't love the Samueli, 
but that is a multi-purpose hall. It can. That's why I brought up the smaller spaces. Yes, and it's thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect for jazz and cabaret and chamber music, but it would also be an ideal location for trying out new work. There's also a theater here called the Judy Moore Theater. Yes, there is. Have you heard of that theater? I have. I have heard of it. Yes. And I'm. It's your favorite spot on campus. I, right? I actually never use the name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it seems strange to say your own name. JMT. I, so that's what we call it, JMT. Um, mostly we use it for rehearsals, for big shows that need rehearsal time during the day, and for our dance schools. Um, but when we have the opportunity, um, we could use it for new productions and smaller attractions that play best in small spaces. Um, so we look forward to that. Developing a new work, a musical could take yes. five, six, seven years. So rehearsal space, right. flexible spaces are, are very important to that process. Right. JMT. Which, if I remember correctly, exactly mimics the dimensions of the stage we're sitting on right now, which makes it the ideal rehearsal space for those performances. Oh, how right. about that? A little trivia. little trivia. A little trivia. So we have another question here. And actually, this question is um, probably the most asked question, hands down, for our ticketing staff. And it comes from Megan. What is the actual best seat in the house? I'm going to say it's Orchestra Terrace. I love sitting there. I sit there almost every chance I get. And that's because the elevation to the stage, it's beautiful. It looks like there's no one in front of me. I get to see the whole stage and everything going on. I love it. It's just that section right there that's off to the side of orchestra. Okay. Favorite. Okay. okay. Your favorite? My favorite. Best that's, seat. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. But I, I don't agree. I would go with... Center orchestra because you're you're right down in the heart of it and you get to see the expression so clearly on the performers' faces. It's my vote. Well, both of you have good ideas, but the right answer, I'm giving the right answer, which is every seat in this house is good. There's great visibility from every seat. Doesn't matter when you're in the orchestra or up in the top tier. So it's up to you wherever you're most comfortable sitting and whatever price ticket you would choose to pay. And this is uh, from one of our donors, Lindsay. And Casey, mm -hmm. she wants to know, as a donor, what are her contributions going to support? Yeah, very good question. I mean, if you were to drive up to the building, it's a little dark right now and the fountain's turned off and it looks like nothing is going on, um, which is not true. We are, as I mentioned, working very diligently to figure out how to reopen and how to reopen safely. We want everyone to, to trust that we are doing that and that takes staff and, and resources to do that. But I think, I think more importantly, as we're working to fulfill our mission and continue to engage the community, we've talked about a lot of things that we are doing. We're continuing the ABT Gillespie School virtually. In a few weeks, we'll be doing that with in-person instruction. The School of Music and Dance for Children with Disabilities, now called Studio D, is ongoing. These programs have uh, achieved record enrollment, and enrollment now be virtually from across the country. I think we have stories of people in Chicago, North Carolina, taking these classes. Uh, our Arts Teach program that reaches a lot of the school districts within Orange County is still alive and well and doing uh, extremely well, reaching a lot of children. And we are continuing to work with virtual programming, as you mentioned, Laura Benanti and others. We are working with American Ballet Theater to create new ballets. So there's a lot of artistic work. There's a lot of community engagement work that's happening right now. And without uh, having the, the tool, the luxury of selling tickets, all we have is contributed revenue to make those, those things go. So contributed revenue is always critical, always important, but right now it's paramount because otherwise we would have no revenue. Well, thank you, Casey and Judy, for taking the time today to be here and answer the questions from our, our donors. It's been wonderful. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your tour.
there. Welcome to the Judy Moore Theater. This is really the heart of the Center for Dance and Innovation. And we thought it would be a great place to talk to you a little bit about what's been happening in the Community Engagement Department. My name is Jason Holland. I'm the Vice President of Community Engagement. And my name is Chloe Salsa. I'm the Coordinator for Community Engagement. So first, maybe let's talk a little bit about something that's I know near and dear to both of our hearts, which is our uh, arts program that serves uh, youth and adults with disabilities. So Chloe, tell us what's been happening over the past six months, some new news yes. uh, from the school. Yes, probably the most exciting news. Um, we are now Studio D, art school for all abilities. Um, our new name embodies the program through and through. We are so excited um, to have a name that definitely just serves the program and um, yeah, encompasses who we have in our community in the program. So comparing it to what we used to call it, what's an example as you know, why we wanted to shift away from some of that language? Yes, so originally the school was the School of Dance and Music for Children with Disabilities, which um, was not completely accurate to who we've evolved to be now. Um, we serve um, students young and old, ages four to 22. We have multiple disciplines now, so art school tells the story of dance classes, musical theater classes, drama. What about the D? Tell me what it signifies for you and maybe for others. So the D for me, I would say dance, disabilities, they come to mind, drama, different mm -hmm. art disciplines. Mm -hmm. I agree with all those words. For me, I think all the words you mentioned and then I'll throw in dazzle because you know, yes. it's the arts, yes. why not? Yes, um, so, th so we have a new name. Mm -hmm. What else is new with the school? So as we've pivoted to virtual classes, um, we've had to definitely shift our focus to who we serve. So our students, they need a little bit more um, introduction from the instructors, uh, some front loading, so they hear a little bit about the class that they, uh, the material that they'll learn in the live class. I think you brought an example. So I'm gonna stall for a second while Chloe grabs the example that we brought for yes. you. Our Studio D to go class kit. We hope they open it and um, smile right away. It's a very <laughs> joyful box mm -hmm. of fun. Um, instruments for their dance and music classes. Um, these very fun emoji balls. Okay, explain to me what these are, please. <laughs> I need to know right away. Um, so in the live class, the teachers might ask, uh, Jason, how are you feeling today? Mm. And Jason will have five well, different... I'm feeling like this right now. I'm feeling a little <laughs> bit nervous because I'm speaking on a camera. But, me as well. But at me dance well. class, I think I would feel this way, which is yes. really excited. Yeah, so they can show their classmates and their teachers if they're feeling silly or happy or a little nervous, um, whatever in that moment um, their emotion is. We also have Studio, Studio D uh, shirts for each student so they can have a uniform in class, mm -hmm. um, small instruments, uh, scarves to dance with. Um, so yeah, it's a great addition to supplement their digital learning experience. So they're getting are. both recorded content, they're getting live Zoom classes, mm -hmm. so we're still distanced, we're still remote, we're being safe right now out of an abundance of caution for our students, but now we're adding to it something tangible to sort of take the experience to the next level, which we're excited about. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about what uh, is happening for the fall with the school. Are we in session? We are. Uh, we are conducting a 10-week fall session with five classes happening each week with students ages 4 to 22, um, musical theater along with our dance and music classes. Um, so the students are back with their teachers and they were so excited to see all of them. Week have, one. have any of our families shared anything with you about what, um, why their students want to be in a virtual class right now when they're already Zooming so yes. much yes. during the day? Why take this kind of a class like this? And there is still that same Zoom fatigue that we're all feeling, um, but they, there has been so much uh, parental caregiver um, feedback saying this is joyful, this is fun, this is exactly the kind of self-expression we want our students to be able to have mm -hmm. outside of their traditional schooling. Um, and they want them to move, they want them to get their wiggles and their exercise at, um, in their week. Yeah, um, express themselves. Exactly. So it's we've had a lot of wonderful positive response from the caregivers and um, their gratitude is so appreciated and we are also so so grateful to connect with them again. Definitely. 
well, why don't we maybe share an example of what this looks like? So what we're gonna share with you coming up here uh, right after we're done speaking is um, a video from the spring. So what you'll notice is some of the footage in this video uh, was our students in class together the way we traditionally would be before the pandemic. And then you'll notice uh, the virtual online uh, content as well. So it's kind of a, a mashup. And this was what the spring was like. Part of it we were together and part of it we were virtual. But nonetheless, that's something the arts are so great at. You know, when it's time to put on a performance, no matter what the platform, no matter what the stage looks like, um, it's time to do the show. So without further ado, uh, we share with you the students from Studio D. Welcome back to the Judy Moore Theater. This is one of six studios that we use here at the American Ballet Theater, William J. Gillespie School. And my name is Elaine O'Bear. I'm the director and principal of the school. My background goes all the way 55 years with ABT. I joined the company in 1965 and have worn many hats. Some of them were tiaras. And I have been very involved in training for the last few years. So that would tell you that I love this art form passionately, and I especially love sharing it with our students. So the school features not only really superb training and uh, attention to artistry and creativity, but it also uh, emphasizes musicality. We have 10 incredible musicians, 10 incredible pianists who play for all of our classes. Our students begin at age three and go all the way up to age 18, and every class features a live pianist. In March, everybody knows what happened in March. Things changed dramatically. And we were preparing here at the school for our showcase, which is the final performance that we do at the end of the school year. Usually we're performing on the concert hall stage. Uh, we discovered we would not be able to do our performance on the concert hall stage. and. It was decided that we would do uh, a virtual showcase, which none of us had ever tried before, but we were all willing. The younger children, the children's division children from age three, four, five, six, all the way up to about nine years old had already started rehearsing. Uh, but the older students, the pre-professional students 
hadn't really started yet. So we put our heads together, we, uh, the faculty and myself, and talked about what we could present that would be interesting on video. And I think we came up with s some incredible ideas. Uh, our showcase video just was released two weeks ago, and it's a very interesting uh, project. We had 280 students. So think about that, 280 different homes with 280 different parents filming the students. We had an incredible videographer who spent well over 200 hours taking all that he was sent and p making art out of this incredible film. And the older students, the uh, pre-professional students, ended up doing some really, really beautiful ABT repertory classics like Swan Lake and La Bayadere and Le Corsair and Sleeping Beauty. And we featured the graduating seniors. We have four graduating seniors. We featured those four students in the Bayadere section. I am particularly proud of the section from The Sleeping Beauty. It's called the Carabas scene. And in the Carabas scene, the uh, 13th fairy arrives. I think you know the story. And she's very unhappy because she has not been invited to the christening of baby Aurora. And she comes with her minions, and the rats are surrounding her. And uh, we wanted to show the theatricality of ballet theater, American ballet theater. So I had already decided to work uh, quite a bit with uh, mime and some acting with the students. This was before we even decided to do this. So I found it very satisfying to be able to show that our students, and this was a lot of younger students who were involved in this particular section, I found it very exciting to be able to show the drama and the theatricality and their comfort level uh, to be on stage. Many of these students have danced with ABT, the main company, in the Nutcracker, so they are comfortable on stage. So I think the uh, showcase video shows as a good example uh, our training here. It begins with age three. It shows the development of the curriculum very nicely. And then it shows the strength and technical skill of the older dancers. And as I said, it shows the artistry of our students. So I think that it's important that you consider supporting our school and our training here. And I thank you in advance for that support. I want you also to know that we are still taking enrollment since things have changed. And we started back three weeks ago virtually. We are ab about to start returning into the studios, which was very exciting for us, and especially the students. Uh, but we are still accepting enrollment. Uh, so now I'm hoping that uh, you will enjoy going further out into the plaza. Thank you very much for your support. It's highly appreciated.
I'm Talina Mara, Vice President of Education here at Segerstrom Center for the Arts. We are so excited to be back on campus today. And if you hear a little noise, it only means that really exciting things are happening here behind me as the Orange County Museum of Art builds their beautiful new building. I am so pleased to have the opportunity to be here with you today and to tell you a little bit about our education programs. I'm standing here in front of our beautiful Renee and Henry Sagerstrom Concert Hall where many of our education programs take place. Some of them go right into the large concert hall, others go to the back of the building to Samueli Theater, some go into our studio performance space, and others into our lovely Boeing Education Lab. I say the education programs are extraordinary because they are. These programs serve almost 300,000 people per year, which makes them among the very largest programs in the nation. Some of our most beloved arts education programs take place inside this beautiful building. Our five days of Broadway program, it's a summer camp for middle school and high school students takes place here. And I don't think you would be surprised to hear me say that many of the students who attend these camps in the summer are extremely talented. And it tells us how much talent there is right here in Orange County and how many arts careers will eventually come from right here in our home area. Another beloved program is Disney Musicals in Schools. This remarkable program serves Title I schools around Orange County and it helps these schools build sustainable arts programs, specifically musical theater programs, which change the lives of the students, the teachers, the staff, the principals, the parents, the entire community in which these schools are located. And I must mention our Summer at the Center program. This program is beloved across Orange County for the way it changes the lives of the students who participate in the program. Each year for the past 30 years, we have brought together students who have issues that they're facing in their lives and at schools that are difficult for them to solve on their own. And through Summer at the Center, we come together for a two-week creative process. We do musical theater pieces. We work through different kinds of issues and problems along the way. And these are the tools of the arts that change the lives of these students who have participated in this program for three decades. Of course, COVID-19 has caused us to be creative in ways we never imagined we would need to be. We have taken our remarkable Arts Teach programming. This is a program that normally serves assemblies, workshops, and residencies live in schools with live artists. And we have transferred it to the digital space where schools and families can use the programming to continue giving arts experiences to their students. This means that many of those 300,000 students we normally serve through live programming are still being served through the digital space. That said, we thought you might like to see a little bit of what Arts Teach does every single day in schools live and in person. We have for you today our wonderful artist group called Tycho Project, and I can't wait to watch them perform on the plaza stage along with you. But before I go, I'd like to thank you so much for everything you do for the center and for its education programs. We are so grateful for you, and we truly, truly thank you. Now, it's my pleasure to present Tycho Project.
Hi everyone, we are the Taiko Project and we are a modern Taiko drumming ensemble based in Los Angeles. Uh, we've been here on the Arts Teach roster at the Sagerstrom Center for the Arts for seven years and normally at this time we'd be in the schools doing performances and assemblies uh, for kids in elementary, middle school, high school. Um, Thank you so much for your support. Uh, the first song that you heard was called Expanding. Uh, and then the next two that we're going to play for you are called uh, Here We Go Now and Omiyage. We hope you enjoy. Thank you.
everybody give it up for Tycho Project. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a fantastic time and learned something new about the center. On behalf of all of us, our board of directors and the artists on our stages, thank you so much for your support. We look forward to seeing you sometime at the center soon. Have a great day.